Good morning. Welcome to A Moment of Truth. I'm Stoney Kaiser, pastor of the Church of God of the Union Assembly here in Dalton, Georgia. So glad that you have tuned in with us today. I hope that the Lord is shining His light on your pathway and that uh, you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Today, I am so thankful. You know, God is He's greatly to be praised. As Psalmist David put in his book, He is, he is great and greatly to be praised. So I praise the Lord today that I have found Him and that He found me and brought me out of a miry clay and put, me, put my feet on a solid rock, and that rock is Christ Jesus. Today I love the Lord, and I'm, I'm thankful for His grace. I'm thankful for His mercy that He has brought me to this point in my life. So if you don't know the Lord today, let me tell you, Jesus Christ can give you joy and peace that nothing in this world can ever give you. If you're living in this life and you're, you're trying to obtain things in this world, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna pass away. They'll fade away. Uh, the, the things that God has got for us, well, they're, they're, they're eternal. Speaking of eternal, you know, eternal is, is forever. And, and, you know, the life that we live here is, is, uh, is short compared to eternity. My pastor, as I was a child, used to say, if you could imagine the earth as, the, as a steel ball and an eagle coming by once a year and landing on it, uh, when that steel ball had worn away, eternity has just begun. So eternity is forever, and, and uh, we, we want the, the pleasures of God and His glory and the glory world for ourselves. And I plan on going to heaven, and I want you there too. Uh, we, we've been speaking about prayer and the power of prayer. That's our text this month. And, and you know, a lot of people, as we talked about last week, when Jesus was telling them the parable about the unjust judge, he started out that before the parable, he said men ought always to pr uh, pray and not to faint. So if you're getting faint-hearted today, if you're not able to overcome the battles that you have, ask yourself the question, do I really pray the way I ought to? Do I have faith in God? Do I trust that when I ask him that he's going to answer my prayer, which sometimes may be no, but nevertheless, you got to have a prayer of faith, not one that is amiss, uh, a prayer that is amiss. It's, God don't hear those kind of prayers. He don't answer those kind of prayers. Uh, so we want to get back into this power of prayer, and we, we're going to go back to Luke, the 18th chapter, where we left off. And we're going to talk about how when we come to God, it's not an arrogancy that we need. We need to have an humbleness about us. Uh, we need to have the, like when Jesus Christ was talking to the disciples and teaching them how to pray. He didn't tell them to, to look at me and look at what I've done. He said, go pray to your Father and tell him, hallowed be thy name. Glorious is God. And when I pray, I, I always try to start out some way giving God thanks for what he done, has done for me in my life and to, and to give him praise for who he is. You know, really, we should praise God whether he's ever done anything for us or not. He's still God. So that's kind of the way that I want to get into this about praying. And if you want that power that comes with prayer, then we need to understand how we should be praying and, and what to do. So let's, let's go to uh, Luke, the 18th chapter, and we're going to start at the ninth verse and, uh, and, and reading down. It said, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. Now, if you'll notice in that ninth verse, it said they had trusted in themselves. Today, I'm, I'm like Apostle Paul said, I'm, my sufficiency is not of myself. My sufficiency is of God. You know, it's God that worketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. If we are, if our life is hid with Christ in God, if we get to the point to where we've turned our life over to the Lord, we can, we can have a prayerful life that is meaningful. It's a prayerful life that, that God will answer and we are willing, just like Jesus when he prayed to the Father and when it's come time for him to die, he went and prayed earnestly to his, his tears became as great drops of blood. But his, this Jesus Christ, his tears are sweat, I can't remember. But nevertheless, he prayed earnestly that, that the cup would pass from him. But he was willing for God's will to be done. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So that's, that's the way we need to be. Lord, it's not what I think. It's not what I am. 
but God, what you are and what you want in my life. So watch this. These two, these men that he's talking about here, he was talking to certain ones that had trusted in themselves. And he said, two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The 11th verse says, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee. Listen to the arrogancy of this guy. He, 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 he thought he was built, him, he built himself up to be something. And God doesn't like that. God don't want us to feel like that we are anything. We have to humble ourselves before God. If you want this power, if you want to have uh, if you want to be justified, you're going to have to be the way that Jesus spoke here. This man here, he, he was not that way. The Pharisee stood and prayed with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Man, can you just about imagine how that old publican felt sitting over there listening to that prayer and, 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 the, and the Lord hearing somebody put him down? Have you ever seen anybody like that that just wants to put you down all the time? You don't have to live that kind of life. You turn your heart and life to Jesus Christ and watch what happened to you. This man said, I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all I possess. And the publican standing afar off, he didn't even feel worthy as to even come near this, this, uh, this Pharisee. He didn't even feel worthy to come over there. And he said, and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. And, and that's the way we have to come when we come to God. We have to come knowing that we're nothing, no matter where you are in your spirituality, no matter where you are in, in, with the Lord. You may be the, uh, a, a, a preacher that can read, read, remember this book from one end to the other. You still have to come humble before the Lord. That's what Jesus Christ did when he went to the garden. He went and got on his knees and he prayed to God. And God heard his prayer, but God said that you've got to bear this for, the, for all of us. But watch this. Let's read that 13th verse again. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. Let's see what Jesus had to say about this. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. He didn't say more or better. He said rather than the other. So it sounded like to me the man that stood praying to himself and thought he was all that, it wasn't justified at all. But the man that come down humble before the Lord, he got the power of God. He got that power through his prayer. He said, I tell you that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Uh, I want to go to Matthew, the fifth chapter. And I want to talk about where Jesus talked to his disciples about praying and how we ought to pray, uh, how we ought to pray to God. And this is this is in uh, Matthew the sixth chapter when Jesus was the, speaking of the Sermon on the Mountain. Um, this sixth chapter, and, and let's just start at the let's just start at the fifth verse. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues. And in the street corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. I'm not looking for a reward in this life. I don't want people to look at me, put me on a pedestal, say that man's this or that man's that. If God is working in me and you can see God in me, you give God praise. Don't give me praise. I've done seen too many feathers plucked and uh, too many crowns lose their they're, they're a stone, and don't tell me, don't, don't let me, th try to make me think that you can't lose your crown because he told us to strive that no man take our crown. So it can happen, and I don't want that to happen for me. Let's read the fifth, sixth verse. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetition. Use not vain repetition. I know these people that uh, every time they pray, they've got a book that they read out of. That's a vain repetition. You need to pray from the heart. God, this is what I need. God, this is where I'm at. But I want you to listen to more of what the Lord told them to be able to receive 
the benefits of praying, this is where we have to be as, as Christians and as people. Seventh verse, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. You see, when we go to God, God already knows. He said, before you even call, I will answer. So he knows your need. He knows the very intent of your heart. When you go down there, he knows whether, that, whether you're going to be like the Pharisee or the publican. He already knows that. But God expects us to be obedient unto his word. And that's to come and to call upon his name. Jesus went on to talk to the disciples, and this is the prayer that he told them to pray. And there's some things in here that, we, that still abide to us today. And, and, of course, there's things that was for them in that day and time, speaking of the kingdom that was to come. I believe the kingdom is already here. It's not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and it's joy in the Holy Ghost. If you tell me the kingdom of God is not here today, then you're telling me the Holy Ghost is not here. But I believe that it is. But nevertheless, let's listen to some things that, got, that the Lord told them to pray that I think that are still applied to us today. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. If you notice the Lord... He was teaching the disciples to put God first, and we should do that in our life today. God should be first and, and foremost in everything in our life, whether it be from our job, our, our children in school, and, you know, they took prayer out of school, and look what's happened. We've got to get back to prayer and, and having that power of prayer, what it can do for us, and understand that. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come. Of course, that's what he was talking to the disciples at that time because Jesus was still here. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I believe in that. I want God's will to be done here just as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, then will, then will your Father forgive you. Let me read that right. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So what he was saying here is we don't need to think that we are something. When we pray, God, forgive me of my trespasses. Forgive me that I'm not what I ought to be. Help me to be what you would have me to be so that I can forgive somebody else. If you want God to forgive you, you've got to be willing to forgive someone else. If you want God to bless you, you need to be like Job was. We need to be like Job was when he started praying for his friends. If you'll pray for others, God will see the compassion that you have in your heart, and he'll have compassion on you. Come down and visit us. We're at 2211 South Dixie Highway here in Dalton, Georgia, the Church of God of the Union Assembly. May God bless you is my prayer.